So you should be teaching them things like how to directly bring themselves up out of their situation. You know, programs should be put together. It should be, you know, lessons on, you know, what to do, what's the next step after high school and how important your grades are going to be, you know, uh, uh, SAT scores and things of that nature, not, you know, calculus, algebra, and things that's going to rack their brain and cause them to have a disconnect with the teacher and cause them to not want to be there no more. And now it's a good thing they did start making them wear uniforms because when I was in high school, it was about fashion, the clothes. So if you're coming from a poor neighborhood and you ain't selling drugs and you're going to school and you got all these kids with these nice clothes on everything about the fashion, that's going to be another thing that's going to cause a disconnect between you and school. And it'll cause you to drop out of school. But all this is by design. This is what they want to happen. They don't want your kid to succeed. You have to fight hard to be middle class. It's a hard ass road. So one of the primary objectives of this whole system is to destroy the black family, to create a divide and conquer between the black man and the black woman, divide and conquer, to create a distrust between the two. And they can do all this by remote control because this is what hip hop music does. Because black women, you don't understand how powerful you are. You don't understand the level of control that you have when it comes to the black community, not just your household. I'm talking about the whole community because black men, we, everything that we do, everything that we do is for you. We do it all to get you. That's a fact. A man is not going to go put gold in his mouth. He ain't going to waste his time putting 22s on that car. He ain't going to waste his time getting that car if it's not going to get him that woman. He ain't going to waste his time on that suit, on that chain, if he didn't think it would get the women. Now, where did he think? Where did he get this idea from? He got it from the music videos. He got it from the music. He heard it. He got it from them. And he said, this is how I get these women. So I'm going to go out and do what I got to do because I'm looking at these videos and I see they got women abundantly and they doing whatever they want. They just throwing it out there. This is what I have to do. So it's going to create a distrust because in these videos, they disrespecting these women. Now, on the other hand, you have black women and they want their hair done nails done they want pedicures they want nice clothes they want jewelry diamonds they want nice shoes and handbags they want all these things and they're looking at the same music videos that you look at and they're taking it from a female perspective they're looking at these girls and they're seeing the kind of men that these girls are hanging around who have all these nice clothes and bags and everything they're seeing that these men are talking about selling drugs and they hooking their girl up and giving their girl listen that even though they're talking to their girl like shit which is why these black women accept it when these, the music calling you a bitch and they still dancing to it. When the music saying all these nasty things about you, but they still dancing to it. They accept it because they feel like they're connecting with it on an emotional and a mental level. Okay, this is what goes on. This is how it is. This is how I get these things. And they're not even realizing it, most of them. So they dance into this music and they're going along and they're dating these men who sell drugs, who don't have any ambition but to be a rapper. Who don't really have anything you know good going on for him except that he got a little bit of money from hustling so they dating these negative men because that's what the music is telling them to do date these negative negative men stay with these men who gonna treat you like shit, you know or you know you be a whore and find you a baller find you a man who got some money you know you, you that's all you do you go after him you use them to get your clothes and you use them to get your bags and that's it that's how you do it and it's the music that's putting this whole image out and we're not realizing it. So now you have the club and you have the black woman coming to the club with everything that the popular culture told her to be. What the music told her to look like, what the music videos told her to look like, what the culture told her to act like. And then you have the man coming to the club the same way, dressing the way the culture says, acting the way the culture says. And they bring it together at the club. And what's being played at the club? The hip hop music, the music is being played. It's played loud. It's played to a point where it's vibrating everything in you. 
And then what happens? That song comes on that you like and you hit the dance floor and you dance in, in a way that the song is telling you to dance. And you are showing that man exactly what he is seeing in those music videos. And he's saying, this is real. This is how it is. So it's validating everything that the music videos is telling them. When this music comes on, these girls dance like this and they dress like this. So I got to, you know, look like I'm a baller and I got to buy them drinks and I got to, you know, I got to go speak to them and I got to get them in this way. But the music also telling me that they are hoes and they're going to do, you know, whatever. So this is how you meet this person. Y'all come together on this whole deception. And then, you know, y'all expect to, well, one of y'all expect, or maybe none of y'all expect a beautiful relationship from it. But sometimes the women do. But the man, his whole thing is, I'm a, I'm, I want to have sex and I want to get out of here. Or I want to keep her around until I'm sexed out and I'm done with her. And that's the whole mindset they come in the door with. And then, you know, what's going to happen? What's going to produce... Uh, what's going to be produced from this whole experience? It's going to be children. Baby is going to come out of this whole thing. And we got to realize that they have so many programs now because they knew what the music was going to do. They knew it was going to cost men to go to jail, so they built prisons. So now we got the whole uh, child support system. We have a whole WIC system. We got a whole system of counselors and daycares and all kinds of things that was put together to give white people more jobs based off of this music, based off of this whole system that they put together that's designed to keep us apart. So think about how many things come out of a bad relationship. Now you have a black woman, she's alone. She got to raise those kids, so she got to work. So now she got to send her kid to public school because she can't afford private school in most cases. And that's where the cycle begins because now he in school with kids from a bad neighborhood, if you're not from a bad neighborhood itself, but then, you know, his parents can't really raise him the way that he should be raised. Dad is not in the picture. Mom can't spend attention with him, especially if he's a man. She can't be a man for him and teach him how to be one. So these other men is teaching him. So then now this whole cycle repeats itself. Now, as I said before, we can trace all of this back to the Willie Lynch letter. Now, when you look at what Willie Lynch was trying to implement, we can see that these same things are being implemented today. They just changed the strategy. They just changed the whole system. So when you look at what Willie Lynch was trying to do, he was trying to separate the young and the old. And today, the young and the old are separated. The generations don't respect each other. The young kids will get on the bus and they'll fight and they'll cuss right in front of old people. They won't give up their seat and they'll do it right in front of old people. And it's just no respect there at all. Another thing, they wanted to separate the dark skin and the light skin. You got all these dark skin uh, uh, actors and actresses changing their skin complexion to light. You know, making black women hate the color of their skin because Beyonce was dark one, one moment, next minute she's light. Same thing with Nicki Minaj. And you got these black women hating themselves. They wanted to also separate black men and black women back then. The beautiful black woman was taken up by the white slave master. He took her and had sex with her, and she did what she had to do to survive. And these black women are saying the same thing today. Well, I got to be a stripper. I got to survive. I got to feed my kids. Oh, I got to be a hooker. I got to survive. I got to feed my kids. Oh, I got to be a whore. I got to go fuck with just ballers and fucking for money because I got to take care of myself. I got to survive. And this is the mentality. Now, of course, you had the black woman. She was looking down at the black slave man because he couldn't protect her. And he couldn't give her the things that this white slave man could give her. Because once that white slave man started treating her well and giving her nice clothes, giving her nice shoes and good food, he told her that she was better than other slave women. So she looked down at those slave women because they was darker, because they was ugly. She looked down at that black slave man and they both looked down at her because she was a sellout. She didn't fight and take the bumps and bruises like the other slave women did. She didn't fight the slave men off like the other women did and get the beating and get less food and got put in a box or whatever. She didn't fight off his advances. She gave in. So they looked down at her as well. And this is what's going on today. Like black men, we look down at these women because they all about the money. They all about what they can get from you. It seemed like all of the black women who have really nice bodies, who look really good. They'll just go be a stripper or be a porn star. They'll just go try to find a man who got money and just try to be with a man who's going to take care of her so she don't have to work. But it seems like the women who look good take a different route. I'm only going to find a man or be with a man who got money. 
So we got to understand what this whole process is, and it's called epigenome. When you really look at epigenome, epigenome is basically like a gene that can be passed down through your generation to where you will carry the same mental traits as your ancestors. And they know about this. So it's in us to go to church and worship Jesus and say hallelujah and all that. It's in us to look down at each other. It's in us to not trust each other. It's in us to not respect our elderly because this is a system that was put in place during slavery. All they had to do was stimulate the gene and put the system back in place in a different way. And this is what we have today. So, yeah, of course, there's a church on the corner in every black neighborhood. Of course, they're giving you the music that's going to stimulate that distrust. They're giving you the music videos that's going to create that separation and divide, just like they did back, back then. They got these black women saying, if you ain't got money, I ain't got time for you. They put everything in place to bring about a whole system of slavery to make us think that we are free and not slaves anymore, but we really are. Because when you look back at everything that we're doing, we are still serving the white man. So if you don't have your own company, your own business, your own kind of economy, then you are still serving the white man. You are serving the dominant race. And that's what black people are doing today. We are still serving them. I mean, it's a fact. So we're looking at these rap stars and these celebrities thinking that they made it. But they are the new house niggas being used to keep you guys in the system and in check. They are complete sellouts. As I said before, they are sellouts, just like the house niggas. So what they did was now, instead of you hating the house niggas, they got you praising the house nigga. You, it's a glorified position now to be a rap star or be you know, a celebrity or a superstar, but you're not serving nobody but them and you're hurting your own people just like the house nigga. It's just, it's the hard facts. And somewhere in you, you know what I'm saying is true. When you're putting everything together, you, it gotta hit you. What I'm saying it has to hit you in some kind of way. Like, damn, this shit is real. Like, this is right. Because what has happened is nobody has stepped back and brought this information to you in this way. It's a lot of, you know, uh, stuff on YouTube and a lot of videos out there and people speaking out about what's going on. But nobody is really trying to attack this whole music industry. I mean, don't get me wrong. Hip hop is ours. It's ours. We created it. It's us. I mean, it's our way to express ourselves, but it don't have to be what it is today. They own it. They own it. It don't have to be this way. It can be something different. Hip hop music could be used to stimulate. I mean, we can bring back the whole black community. We can bring everything back with just hip hop music. It's that influential. you. These people are that influential. you. So if, if we're showing that shaking your ass and selling drugs and all that is so popular that you can blow up off of it. If we reverse that and show that, man, if you go to school and get this education, you'll be successful. Women, if you dress nice, if you act classy, you'll get a man that'll keep you and he won't want to let you go because he wouldn't want to let another man get what you have. If we show the woman that, it would change them. But that's not what we are showing them. And all of you know, come on, like, let's stop fronting. How can you sit there and tell me that shoot a nigga in the head till he dead is what's popping? It's right. How can you sit there and, and tell me Anaconda, that video of Nicki Minaj, is right? Listen to what she's saying. Listen to what she's talking about. How can you women tell me that twerking is right? It's cool. How can you sit there and say that? Your mind is so messed up by what they have given you that you don't realize the shit that you do is absolutely crazy. And we take up for these celebrities. We take up for these rap stars and people fight and, you know, heated debates and arguments over somebody who trying to destroy you and your people who have sold you out a long time ago. And in some cases, I can't even blame these dudes because people just so gullible when they act so stupid. When you try to wake them up, they think you crazy. They look at you like you got seven eyes. So it's like. We got to wake up and educate each other because I think with education and everybody can look at the system and see what it really is. We can start stepping back and looking at these rappers like, you know, what you just said? Like, that's crazy what he just said. This motherfucker talking about killing kids and kidnapping kids. I'm not listening to him. That's not what's good. That's not what's going to help our people move forward. And what you're going to have is 
Poverty needs to survive in order for their system to survive. You need to be in poverty. So as long as we poor, we're going to keep looking up to these people. But when you ask yourself, <clears throat> when you take a step back and you look at how can any respectable woman, how can any woman who say they want respect from a man, they want to be treated like a queen from a man, they want to be treated good by a man, how can any woman listen to or follow Nicki Minaj and what Beyonce represents? How can you follow these women out here who are telling you to cause a problem in your relationship, to only date men who have money that will treat you a certain way, when you know that what they are saying is going to cause you to do things that is not part of your character for most of you women, that's not really you. It's going to cause you to change and you're going to act a certain way. Now, unbeknownst to you, what they're not telling you is these men are not going to respect you. They're going to only bed you. And guess what? That's exactly what the rappers are telling them to do. That's what they rap about. And y'all dance to the very music that is saying you are a whore. You dance to the same music that's saying, I'm just going to take you home and do this and then I'm going to throw you out. And you laugh and you, you watch this stuff in these music videos and you dance to it and you watch it and you accept it and you pay money to, for the album and you pay money to go to these concerts and you scream and all this for these men and women who are destroying you personally. And I mean, come on, you can't look at it and say it's just music. We can't do that no more because we are seeing it. We're seeing the result of it. Look at these kids today. Look at how they act and look at the stuff that's going on at the schools. Look at these little girls and these teenagers. Look at who they are emulating, who they're trying to be. You can't go on Facebook now and see a, a girl with a with a name that's not Minaj or, you know, re referencing uh, Nicki Minaj or trying to look like her. It's all about the big booties who got who got a butt, got to twerk, got to get as many likes and comments as I can get. We know what the music is doing, so don't act like it's not doing these things. Don't act like you don't see it. Don't act like WorldStarHipHop.com is not destroying the black community. So now, while we sitting back and we asking for equal rights and we asking them to you know, respect black life, we don't even respect it ourselves. So now, looking back at everything that I just showed you, especially as it pertains to crack, the whole black community being messed up by crime and the hip hop era, which is still going on today. When you look at all that, it sets the stage for what we have today and all of these police shootings. Because now, as I said, while we're screaming out, we want equal justice and black power and all this and that. How do you think the white people are viewing us? How do you think the people around the world are viewing us when we show them twerking, ass shaking, shooting them up, kill them, bang, bang, selling drugs and poison to each other, fighting each other, putting videos on worldstarhiphop.com. How do you think we look to them when that's what we putting out? And then we proud of it. We smile and we laugh and we act like these people. And we ain't got shit, but we trying to act like these people. How do you think that makes us look when we say, we want equal rights and we want, we want to be, we want respect and this and that and make us look like hypocrites and make us look stupid. Because one, as I said before, these white people, they don't understand it. They don't know what's going on in the community. They don't understand that when you have poverty, it's going to absolutely create crime. They don't understand. They think we have the same choices as they do, as they did, which we know we do not. They don't know what's going on. So, it's a part of the whole system because they have to keep our image destroyed. They have to keep the image of the black man and woman in shadows. They have to keep it messed up. They have to show the rest of the world that this is what we are. Don't feel no sympathy for these black people because they are animals. So they got to give they got to give the world shows like First 48, you know, lock up all these shows showing black men in jail and black men killing each other. They have to give you shows like Maury showing that these black women are whores and they don't even know who their baby daddies is. They got to put shows out there like Jerry Springer saying that black men are gay and this is what, you know, this is what's going on. Cheaters. All these shows have to be put out there. We don't get the shows like Big Bang Theory. We don't get shows like How I Met Your Mother. We don't get the shows that show black people in a setting looking civilized. 
showing black people in a setting looking like they have morals showing black people having touching moments like how i met your mother and in these other shows when they have nice warm touching moments between each other between their women and their men you don't see black shows like that instead we get shows like empire we got to be a criminal you got to be an ex-drug dealer or a rapper. That's the only way. So we have to understand this is psychological warfare. And they're using music and movies against us. So when you take a step back and you start looking at these movies and looking at how black people are portrayed in these movies, then we can see we are always cast in a negative light in most of these Oscar-winning movies.